I'm Roddy Jones. And that man right there, that's Coach Vince Dooley. Not only a legend in the history of University of Georgia athletics, but a legend in the history of college football in general. Before Coach Dooley passed in October of 2022, I was honored and fortunate enough to sit down to talk with him about his life, his career, and his legacy. I've really enjoyed my part of being retired. I've got a curiosity about me. I'm still learning. Living around a university, I'm enjoying life. I was very fortunate to be able to be at one place for a while. It's now 59 years. It'll be 60 soon. And then to raise a family all in one place and in the coaching profession. committed to do something, and I'm still with it. Well, Coach, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here with you. I want to go way back to the beginning of your sports career in Mobile, Alabama. I heard that you were a basketball player as well. Take me through how you balanced playing basketball and football, how you eventually ended up playing football and getting recruited by Auburn. Well, it wasn't too hard to play football and basketball in high school. Playing in college is a lot tougher. Basketball is fun. Basketball practice has always been fun because you you got the ball and it's, it's actually a small group. Football is a lot of hard work, except when you get into scrimmages or when you play a game. So I really enjoyed basketball and was pretty good at it, and maybe that's why I really enjoyed it. And I was thinking about being maybe a basketball player in college. So finally I said, I'll sign and play both sports, which I did for a couple of years until I tore my knee up. Your football career at Auburn certainly was distinguished. You ended up being a captain, obviously a quarterback. For Sir Jordan, having played under Coach Jordan, when did you first become interested in coaching and know that that's the way that you were gonna go? Well, I think a little of it came from a high school coach. Um, his name was Ray Sherry, and uh, he was just a, had a tremendous influence on the players that he coached. Was a big influence on me. I was kind of a sophomore. I didn't know what I was doing. But he always uh, had a way of allowing me to see things I should have seen at that early age. So he was really a, a great high school coach that I give a lot of credit to. After your time in the Marine Corps, you spent eight years as an assistant coach. What did you learn during that that prepared you to be a head coach at, at an SEC school? Well, I give the Corps a lot of credit because I constantly drew from things that you learn as an officer in the Marine Corps. You learn leadership. It's all about leadership. It's all about influencing men and organization. These things I carried over into my coaching. So it was very beneficial to me. And I stayed in the reserves the whole time I was an assistant coach until I became head coach at Georgia. When we come back, Coach Dooley joins the University of Georgia and plays against his former mentor. I'm the one they call 
called James Bates, but my real name is Batesy. Portraits, where we feature some of the more colorful characters in all the world of sports. And as I got older, I was like, hold up, I can make a little money off this name. I <laughs> didn't know that there was a path to be playing in the NFL. I was like, yeah, I wouldn't have offered me either. I get chills hearing that. Welcome back to a special edition of The Rise. Let's talk about 1964. That's the year that you get the head coaching job at Georgia. It's also a big year for your family as you had one of your children that year as well. But what was it like to get that job in the SEC as the head coach, especially with everything that was going on off the field? Well, it was just a, a surprise to me. I had a, a plan and a vision in my mind how I was gonna become a head coach. I was at Auburn and I felt like I needed a change. I went to Coach Jordan, told him I'd like to have an opportunity maybe to go away and serve under a couple of other coaches. One of them was a fellow named Del Royal, who was at Texas. And the other one was Frank Broyles at Arkansas. And a legendary. So my plan was to go serve as an assistant. And then when Coach Jordan retired, they'd say, come on back home. That was my plan. What a beautiful day for football. And this job at Georgia just came out of the blue. So what do you do? I mean, you get offered the job. You're 31 years old. You're getting ready to go into the Southeastern Conference. So what can you say other than, if you got guts enough to hire me, I'm going to take it. How many times did you coach against Coach Jordan, and, and was that difficult? Well, not so much during the game, but when it's over. And then you walk out, and you see it's, it's your coach. It's the same way my brother, who was with me when I first came, became head coach at North Carolina, Virginia Tech. And we played each other one time in the Gator Bowl. And I'm, Glad we never did it again, because it split our family terrible. It's a battle between the Dooleys, Bill, coach of the Tar Heels, and Georgia coach, Brother Vince. This is the first time ever that brothers have coached against each other in a bowl game. You don't think about that he's over there doing the game. The University of Georgia takes the Gator Bowl lead six to three. But when it's over and you walk across and you see the disappointment on his face, you felt a little bit more understanding than normally the coach you would see, but still you glad it was him and not me. <laughs> Absolutely. I told Coach Dooley, I said, uh, you know, Coach, when I first came here, I, I was scared to death of it. But I told him, I love you today. I love you because you were like a father. You know, it was just like my parents, you didn't let me get away with anything, and that's what a parent is supposed to do. And I think because of that, you made me a better man. But what he's done here for the university, I said that he's the type of man you want to lead your program. I want to talk about one of your players that you've mentioned a couple of times, that's Herschel Walker. How great a player was he at the University of Georgia for you? We hand it off to Herschel, he's running all over people! Walker. Well, he was a great player in high school, yeah. but he was in the smallest classification in the state. You know, he was like a man playing with little boys. I used to sometimes go watch him play, and the quarterback would pitch the ball to him on a sweep, and the lineman would line up, and then as soon as the ball snapped, he'd turn around and watch Herschel. <laughs> he dominated it so much. So the question was, how was he going to adjust to SEC football? I knew he was going to be great. I didn't know how fast he was going to be great. But I did give him an opportunity to see, and that was in the, in the opening game against Tennessee. And we hand it off to Walker in the middle, 15, 20. There goes Herschel Walker. There goes Herschel Walker all the way. The plan was to play each of the tailbacks two series, and then we'll decide what happens. Well, when he got in, there was no question. I mean, he won the job in front of his teammates, in front of the Georgia people, because he was without a question the best player. Biggest stars in college football, 
at the time, still one of the biggest stars that college football has ever seen. How much in NIL money do you think Herschel Walker would have made it? Oh my goodness. I don't know the the details of what I hear. Heisman Trophy winner, I understand, is a million and a half going into the season. So with Herschel, that could have been could have been a million and a half or two million. When we come back, Coach Dooley talks about the 1980 championship team and what it means for Georgia to win it all again. The crew and I have been discussing the similarities to the Green Bay G. You were here when the G got put on the helmet, so we figured there's no better person to ask. How did it come about that the Green Bay G and the George G look so similar? Green Bay did have an oval G. I call it a forward-looking G. But Green Bay does not have the most harmonious colors in existence. If you think about it, there are no colors that are more harmonious than black on white on red. My assistant coach, his wife, Ann Dawson, was an art major. We asked her to design a forward-looking G, but it looked enough like that the athletic director, Joe Leaves, called Green Bay and they said, fine. I'm told that the Green Bay G has slowly migrated to look more like your forward looking G over that time. There were some, some little differences that they have adjusted. I want to take you back to the 1980 National Championship team. When you think about that team, what, what comes to mind? Well, we were fortunate that uh, that particular class is the Herschel class. But there were a lot of other good players on that team, like Scott Warner, who is a Hall of Famer. He was the Herschel of defense. We had some good people up front on both sides of the ball. And then we had a fellow named Terry Hogue, who at the time was not a superstar, but became one and was a two-time consensus All-American. And Herschel was a three-time consensus. <laughs> so we had a lot of good players. That particular year just all fell into place. And sometimes it has to do that in order to win. And we somehow won a lot of games in the fourth quarter and got to where we believed we could always find a way to win. And they went through the season undefeated, which is hard to do at this day and time. Is there a moment that stands out to you as, as either the turning point or the time, as you said, that you guys started to believe that you could win every game? And it was a Florida game, which we were losing. They knocked us around all over. It was a season in which some phase of the game would step up at an opportune time that didn't step up maybe the game before. Case in point, we won the fourth quarter of that ball game. Third down on the eight, in trouble. Got a block behind him, going to throw and a run, complete to the 25, to the 30. Lindsey's got 35, 40. Lindsey's got 45, 50, 45, 40. Run, Lindsey, 25, 20, 50, 10, 5. Lindsey Scott, Lindsey Scott, Lindsey Scott. So it was always some other phase of the game that enabled us to somehow, some way, win all of them. How proud are you of the latest national championship for the University of Georgia? Well, it was very special. It took 41 years for it to happen again. We came close a couple of times. Mark Rick, who was here and did a fine job, came very close. It's got to all fall in place. And it fell in place for us this year. Our team was better coached. They played better. And it showed up. We won the fourth quarter of that ball game. The sport has changed so dramatically. It's gotten more sophisticated. The game is even better, more exciting. The rivalry, 
the love of college football, it only gets better all the time. College football has been my life, and uh, that's come from being at the right place at the right time. You have a special pride inside. When we come back, women's athletics gets a shot in the arm with Title IX. As successful as your tenure was as a head coach and as an athletic director, uh, dozens of national championships under your watch. You, you championed women's sports. You expanded the athletic department. What does it make you feel to see the success that the athletic department has had? Well, very proud of that, particularly the women's sports, because when I became athletic director, Title IX had just gotten in. And I think we got a jump on a lot of schools because everybody was wondering, what is the interpretation of Title IX? In meeting with the uh, women's athletic director, we just made a decision how we were going to interpret it. And that is that any time we had two sports that were comparable, the aim was to bring the women's sport up to the men's sport in facilities, coaches, equipment. And by doing that, in the very first year, I think it really helped us because our program got good early and stayed good for a long time. I want to talk about your son, Derek, who has had his own coaching journey. As a longtime coach, watching your son go through it, what's that experience been like with the highs that he's reached and the coaching career that he's built over decades? Well, we thought if we had it going in the right direction, he went to Virginia, walked on to his credit, won a scholarship, and then went to law school here in Georgia. Then he became a lawyer, had a good job. And I said, man, we got him going in the right direction. <laughs> then he comes to me and he said, Dad, I'm not happy. I want to coach. I said, oh, I almost fell out of the chair. But that's what he wanted to do. He's in coaching rehab right now, I guess you'd say. He's back with Saban. I think he's really enjoying the experience because he said, Saban knows what he's doing. The way football has changed, no huddle, throwing the ball all over the place, everything spread. Do you like watching football today? Uh, yeah. Right now, I think we're in a real transition. It's more professional than I've ever seen it. The NCAA took 40 or 50 years to decide that one of the biggest problems we got is the alumni. So they got them out of recruiting. And now the alumni are back in recruiting. It's gonna take three years at least to come to the realization we've gotta have some control, which right now we don't. I'm concerned about it from that standpoint, but I'm also confident that historically they've been able to find ways to work it out, and I think they will with what we're going on. One of the things that seems like you've really enjoyed learning and teaching is history. Where did the interest in history come from, and the interest in the Civil War in particular? The history I've always enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Some courses, you just have to, you're in there and you're struggling and you got to make yourself study. But history, I enjoy. I enjoy the learning of history. In our OTC program, which is how I got commissioned, there was a lot of military history. Even got a master's degree in history, even though I was undergraduate in economics, primarily even though it took me five years to do it because I had to go back for two and a half years, just basic courses. But the best advice I had, if you enjoy whatever you're doing, it may take a lot longer, but you've got a lot better chance of getting it done if you really like what you're doing. Continued success you had eventually had Georgia build a statue of you. 
How does it make you feel to, to know that you've had that type of impact? Well, very fortunate. Our family is quite, quite proud of that. I was also the athletic director, so the statue came in which they named a certain number of facilities after me. It's a very proud moment. It makes me feel good because I committed to do something, and I'm still with it. After 60-some years, when I first came, I told my wife, I don't get too settled. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. I'm going to give it the best try I got, but you might not even unpack. But I was able to survive crises along the way, which is very special to me. When you get loyal to something, then you grow with that. How much do you love the University of Georgia? Well, when you commit yourself over a long period of time and be able to go through some tough times and still have your job, you love it. I've watched the university grow. And as they grew and got better and got more recognized, then you have a special pride inside. I've been around an educational institution where college football is very important. Over 60 years of my life that I have enjoyed with my family all in one place. I love the game. I'm completely committed to it. The ups, you couldn't feel any better. When you go down, there's no in-between. Either won or you lost. And it's a terrible feeling. But it's also a feeling of, I want to get another chance. I'm going to get another chance. Which is a learning of, of life lessons. Well, Coach, you've been incredibly gracious with your time. Wanted to thank you. Uh, for spending some time with us, for chatting with us. Thank you for being on the rise. Well, thank you, and I'm proud to see you doing real well at what you really want to do. This has been a special edition of The Rise. Be sure to check out other episodes, memorable games, and original programming on Origin Sports. I'm Roddy Jones. Thanks for joining us.